Welcome, esteemed viewers, to a riveting exploration into the illustrious career of MC Hammer, the multifaceted rapper, entertainer, and dancer whose influence resonates across generations. Join me on a captivating journey through the annals of musical history as we delve into the highs and lows of Hammer's dynamic trajectory. From his chart-topping hits to his iconic dance moves, we'll uncover the essence of his artistic prowess. But it's not just about the stage today, we venture beyond the spotlight to uncover the lavish villas he calls home. The sleek automobiles he commands, and the staggering net worth that underscores his legacy. All the details you need are right here in this video. Let's dive in now. MC Hammer, the renowned American rapper, entertainer, and dancer, has left an indelible mark on the music industry with his captivating performances and unconventional style. Despite his initial rise to fame and fortune, recent reports indicate that his current net worth stands at $2 million as of April 2024, a stark contrast to the staggering $70 million he amassed at the pinnacle of his career during the 1990s. Tragically, Hammer's financial downfall can be attributed to a pattern of excessive personal spending, which ultimately led to his filing for bankruptcy in 1996. This sobering turn of events serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the pitfalls of unchecked extravagance in the realm of celebrity. In the forthcoming sections of this article, we will delve deeper into the intricacies of MC Hammer's financial journey, shedding light on the extravagant mansion that played a pivotal role in his financial unraveling. Despite the challenges he faced, Hammer's unique dancing skills and distinct fashion sense endeared him to millions, leading to the sale of over 25 million albums throughout the 1990s. MC Hammer, born Stanley Kirk Burrell on March 30, 1962, emerged from humble beginnings in Oakland, California. Raised in a cramped three-bedroom apartment in East Oakland, young Stanley experienced firsthand the challenges of financial hardship alongside his mother, a hard-working secretary, his father, a professional poker player, and his eight siblings. Despite their modest circumstances, the Burrell family found ways to make ends meet, including selling misplaced baseballs in the parking lot of the Oakland Coliseum. It was here that fate intervened in the form of Oakland Athletics team owner Charles Finley, who spotted the 11-year-old Stanley showcasing his remarkable dance moves and agility. Impressed by his talent and charisma, Finley swiftly hired Stanley as a clubhouse and Batman assistant, a role he would fulfill from 1973 to 1980. After graduating from McClemmons High School in Oakland, Stanley made the pivotal decision to join the United States Navy. Serving as a non-commissioned officer for three years, he demonstrated dedication and discipline until his honorable discharge. Before MC Hammer's meteoric rise to fame and fortune, Stanley Kirk Burrell embarked on a musical journey that laid the foundation for his future success. Teaming up with singer-songwriter John Gibson, he formed the Christian rap group known as the Holy Ghost Boys. Where he honed his craft and showcased his early talent, Hammer, alongside gospel legend Tremaine Hawkins, captivated audiences with electrifying performances at venues like the Beverly Theater in Beverly Hills, where they debuted songs like, Word, B-Boy Chill, and, Stupid Deaf Y'all, in 1987. Amidst his burgeoning success, Hammer forged friendships with notable figures in the entertainment industry, including talk show host Arsenio Hall and fellow rapper Vanilla Ice. Despite rumors of discord, Hammer's appearance on, The Arsenio Hall Show, in 1989, where he debuted the iconic hit, You Can't Touch This, solidified his status as a cultural icon. In 1990, Hammer unleashed his magnum opus, Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him, featuring the smash hit, You Can't Touch This. Sampling Rick James's Super Freak, the song catapulted Hammer to unprecedented heights of fame, dominating the airwaves and earning him critical acclaim. Subsequent hits like, Have You Seen Her? and Pray further solidified his status as a global sensation. With the album achieving diamond status and selling over 18 million units worldwide. Following a bold move to shed the MC from his stage name, Hammer unveiled his highly anticipated album, Too Legit to Quit, in 1991. Produced once again by Felton Pilot, the album served as a defiant response to his critics, with sales soaring to over 5 million copies worldwide. The title track emerged as the standout single, propelling the album to the top five of the Billboard 200 chart. After a four-year break from the music scene, Doug E. Fresh made a comeback in 1992, signing with Hammer's label, Busted Records. Fresh released an album titled, Doin' What I Gotta Do, featuring the single, Bustin' Out, 
on Funk, which sampled Rick James's hit from 1979. Despite some minor praise for the single, the album failed to gain commercial success. During this period, Hammer secured a multi-million dollar contract with a new record company, ultimately parting ways with Felton Pilot and transitioning to Giant Records. He also established role with it entertainment and sports management, representing high-profile clients like Evander Holyfield and Dion Sanders. Additionally, his production company released the hit rap song, Gangsta Lean, by DRS in 1993. In 1993, MC Hammer embarked on recording his fifth official album, recognizing the evolving landscape of hip-hop. The result was, The Funky Headhunter, a departure from his previous style, featuring a more aggressive sound. Collaborating with rapper and producer Stefan Adamek, Hammer aimed to appeal to the burgeoning gangsta rap audience while retaining elements of his signature style. Despite the shift in sound, Hammer's lyrics maintained their characteristic honesty, with a touch of profanity, reflecting the realities of street life. In 1994, Hammer's busted records label released, Prime Time, by Dion Sanders, further expanding his musical ventures. Sanders, a close friend of Hammer, had previously appeared in his music videos. Additionally, Hammer released the album, Inside Out, in 1995, but it failed to replicate the success of his earlier records. Facing financial challenges, Hammer expressed feelings of betrayal by those he had supported, a theme echoed in his music and interviews. Amidst these developments, Hammer's association with Death Row Records, led by Suge Knight, marked a significant shift in his career trajectory. Although Death Row did not release an album of Hammer's music during his tenure, he collaborated with artists like Tupac Shakur, notably on the song, Too Late Playa. Following Shakur's tragic death in 1996, Hammer distanced himself from the label. Reflecting on his experiences and concerns in subsequent interviews, in October 1996, MC Hammer made a move to Emmy, signing a deal that led to the release of a compilation album titled, Greatest Hits. This album, comprising 12 of his previous hit singles before, The Funky Headhunter, aimed to keep his music alive amidst a shifting musical landscape. Following this, in 1998, another compilation titled, Back to Back Hits, hit the shelves, produced by Sema. Despite these efforts, Hammer faced challenges as his attempt to reinvent himself with a heavier rap style didn't resonate with audiences. In 1998, MC Hammer released, Family Affair, his first album under Emmy, intending to showcase artists signed to his Oaktown Records. Despite heavy promotion, particularly on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, none of the singles from the album charted significantly. However, notable on the album was a song titled, Unconditional Love, penned by Tupac Shakur, which Hammer later performed at the VH1 Hip Hop Honors in 2004. Family Affair was a double album centered around themes of faith and family values. Featuring tracks like, Put It Down, Big Man, and Pray, 1998. Although it didn't achieve commercial success, the album's interactive features on compact discs added a unique touch. In 2000, another compilation album titled, The Hits, was released, featuring 17 songs from Hammer's first four albums. Then, in response to the September 11, 2001 attacks, MC Hammer released, Active Duty, under his own label, World Hit Music Group. The album, themed around patriotism, featured tracks like, no Stop and Use, USA, and Pop Yo Collar. With proceeds donated to 9-11 charities, following his departure from Capitol Records and Emmy, MC Hammer released his ninth studio album, Full Blast, in 2004. The album didn't spawn chart-topping singles and wasn't certified by the RIAA. However, it featured guest artists like the Stooge Players and Pleasure. After going independent, MC Hammer took a bold step by establishing his digital label to release his 10th studio album, Look Look Look, in February 2006. This album marked a significant move in his career trajectory. Produced by renowned music producer Scott Stork, Look 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 showcased a fusion of Hammer's signature style with contemporary beats. The album boasted the title track single, accompanied by a music video, which contributed to its commercial success, selling around 300,000 copies worldwide. During the period spanning 2006 to 2007, Hammer released a poignant rap song titled, Bring Our Brothers Home, conveying a powerful political message urging President George W. Bush to bring American troops home from war.
The accompanying video for the song was filmed at the iconic Santa Monica Pier, amplifying its impact and reach. In 2008, Emmy Records released Platinum MC Hammer, a compilation album featuring 12 tracks from Hammer's illustrious career. The collection mirrored the format of his previous, greatest hits, recordings, with the inclusion of a remix of They Put Me In A Mix, featuring rap lyrics absent in the original version. This release aimed to celebrate Hammer's enduring legacy and appeal to both longtime fans and new audiences alike. Getting Back to Heaven, released as a digital single in 2008, showcased Hammer's versatility by blending funky deep soul with a contemporary house style. While media reviews were mixed, the song, I Got Gigs, gained traction and was featured in a 2009 ESPN commercial, further solidifying Hammer's enduring influence in the music industry. In February 2009, MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice joined forces for a memorable concert at the McKay Events Center in Orem, Utah. Reflecting on their long-standing friendship and shared history in the hip-hop scene, the concert served as a nostalgic moment, reigniting the magic of their past collaborations and performances. MC Hammer found himself in the spotlight again in 2010, embroiled in a feud with none other than hip-hop mogul Kanye West and his collaborator Jay-Z. The clash ignited when Jay-Z took aim at Hammer in his verse on the track, So Appalled, where he referenced Hammer's financial woes in the 1990s. Hammer, displeased with the lyrical jab, took to Twitter to announce his retaliation. Promising to release a song on Halloween as a response. True to his word, on November 1st, Hammer dropped the bombshell a song and video titled, Better Run Run. The video depicted Hammer confronting Jay-Z, accusing him of being in league with the devil and ultimately defeating Satan himself, forcing Jay-Z to undergo a symbolic baptism. The release of the song marked a dramatic escalation in the feud, with Hammer making bold claims about Jay-Z's alleged associations and beliefs. In subsequent years, MC Hammer continued to release music, showcasing his versatility and enduring relevance in the industry. In 2011, he debuted the song, See Her Face, on The Oprah Winfrey Show, marking the first time music was featured on the Flipboard app. In 2013 and 2014, he released, Raider Nation, Oakland Raiders Anthem, and, All In My Mind, demonstrating his ongoing commitment to his hometown and his passion for creating music. In 2017, Hammer revisited his chart-topping hit from 1990, Helping Children. Releasing an updated version accompanied by a short film video. Through his music and philanthropic efforts, MC Hammer continues to leave his mark on the music industry and make a positive impact on communities around the world. Additional Business Projects MC Hammer's journey extends far beyond the realm of music, delving into ventures ranging from horse racing to technology entrepreneurship. In 1991, Hammer ventured into the world of horse racing by founding Oaktown Stable, which soon boasted 19 thoroughbred racehorses. Light Light, one of his standout horses, clinched several prestigious grade 1 races, including the renowned Kentucky Oaks. Another colt, Dancer, trained by the esteemed D. Wayne Lucas, secured victories in grade 2 races and made a notable appearance in the Kentucky Derby. Transitioning into the late 1990s and early 2000s, Hammer expanded his endeavors, launching a clothing line named J Slick and initiating the development of MC Hammer USA, an interactive online platform. Amidst these projects, he inked a book deal with Simon & Schuster in 2002, intending to release an inspirational book addressing family and African-American fatherhood. However, the manuscript never materialized, leading to legal disputes over the unfulfilled contract. Beyond the realms of entertainment and literature, MC Hammer emerged as a prominent figure in the tech industry, leveraging his entrepreneurial acumen to spearhead various internet ventures. In 2007, he co-founded DanceJam.com, a community website dedicated to dance and style competitions. Despite receiving substantial funding, the site ceased operations in 2011. Hammer's foray into mixed martial arts management marked another milestone, as he established Alchemist Management to represent and promote fighters. In addition to his tech ventures, Hammer made waves in the world of fashion with the launch of Alchemist Clothing, a vibrant lifestyle brand showcased at high-profile events like the Ultimate Fighting Championship. His multifaceted career journey culminated in appearances at prestigious conferences like TechCrunch Disrupt and The Oprah Winfrey Show, where he shared insights into his diverse portfolio and reflected on his resilience amidst challenges. Television and Film Career
MC Hammer's journey in the entertainment industry transcends music, as he left an indelible mark on film, television, and advertising, showcasing his multifaceted talents to the world. In 1990, he ventured into filmmaking with Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him, the movie, a gripping tale of a rapper's quest to combat a drug lord exploiting children, earning him a Grammy Award for Best Long Form Music Video. His star power extended to major marketing campaigns for corporate giants like Pepsi, KFC, and Toshiba during the zenith of his career. In 1991, he lent his voice and persona to the Saturday morning cartoon, Hammerman, captivating young audiences with his animated alter ego. Hammer's television appearances spanned iconic shows like Saturday Night Live, where he showcased his musical prowess as both host and musical guest, and Martin, where he charmed audiences with his magnetic presence. Additionally, he made memorable cameos in films like Arnold Schwarzenegger's Last Action Hero and The History of Rock and Roll, Volume 5. Hammer's enduring relevance is evident in his appearances in commercials, where his songs and dances were featured in ads for brands like Lay's, Hallmark, and Purell. His impact on popular culture is further highlighted by his voice acting roles in animated series like Uncle Grandpa and his participation in game shows like Beat Shazam. Continuing to stay in the public eye, Hammer served as a spokesperson for brands like 3M Command Strips and Starburst. His appearance on The Greatest at Home Videos in September 2020 reaffirmed his enduring presence in the entertainment landscape, showcasing his ability to connect with audiences across generations. As MC Hammer continues to evolve and engage with new mediums, his influence remains a testament to his enduring creativity and cultural significance. Bankruptcy, Litigation and Media Reaction MC Hammer's financial journey has been a roller coaster ride of soaring success and stark setbacks. His rise to fame culminated in a record breaking year in 1991 when he raked in an astonishing $33 million from various sources, including album sales, endorsements, and tours. This earning spree propelled him to the upper echelons of wealth, equivalent to about $70 million in today's currency. However, with great wealth came lavish spending habits. Hammer's extravagant lifestyle saw him accumulating around $10 million in debt between 1990 and 1996. Despite his immense earnings, his expenditures on luxury cars, private jets, a record label, and a sprawling estate in California outpaced his income, leading to financial turmoil. One of Hammer's notable expenditures was his large entourage, which reportedly cost him a staggering $500,000 per month at the peak of his fame. The allure of fame and fortune often came hand in hand with the pressure to maintain an extravagant lifestyle, contributing to his financial downfall. In 1996, Hammer's financial woes reached a breaking point, prompting him to file for bankruptcy. His bankruptcy filings revealed substantial debts, including personal loans totaling a million dollars from NFL, MLB star Deion Sanders and a personal attorney. Despite efforts to manage his financial obligations, he struggled to overcome the burden of his past spending habits. Even years after his bankruptcy filing, Hammer continued to grapple with financial challenges. By December 2013, he still owed the IRS a hefty sum of $800,000 in back taxes and penalties from income earned in 1996 and 1997. Legal documents indicated that any income he earned was first allocated to settle his outstanding tax liabilities before reaching him personally highlighting the enduring repercussions of his financial missteps. Despite the setbacks, Hammer persevered, gradually rebuilding his financial stability through new ventures, including the release of a new album and management of a record label. His journey serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of unchecked spending and the importance of financial prudence. Offering valuable lessons in resilience and fiscal responsibility. My dear audience, what do you think about his career over the years, along with his enviable assets? Your feedback is invaluable to us, so please leave us your comments in the section below. And now we come to the houses he already owns. Mansion in Fremont, California. In October 1990, he made headlines when he splashed $5 million on a 12-acre estate nestled in the hills above his hometown of Oakland, California. Such a hefty price tag for a property in this area, especially during that time, was virtually unheard of, equivalent to spending up to $11 million in today's market. However, Hammer didn't stop there. Determined to create his ultimate dream home, he embarked on a grandiose project to transform the estate. 
The original 11,000 square foot mansion was demolished to make way for a colossal 40,000 square foot custom residence. This new architectural marvel boasted an array of luxurious amenities, including a bowling alley, Italian marble floors, two swimming pools, multiple tennis courts, a recording studio, a state of the art computerized thermostat, a media room, four dishwashers, a gym, a 17 car garage, and even a baseball field. The sheer opulence of the mansion reflected Hammer's larger than life persona and his penchant for the finer things in life. The ambitious construction project, however, came at a staggering cost. Estimates suggest that Hammer poured anywhere between 12 to 20 million dollars into building his extravagant abode, equivalent to an eye-watering 20 years to 45 million dollars by today's standards. The exorbitant expenditure significantly depleted his financial resources, leaving him with limited liquidity to sustain his vast holdings. Following his financial downturn and subsequent bankruptcy filing in 1996, Hammer was forced to part ways with his lavish estate. In a bid to recoup some of his losses, he listed the property for sale at a lofty price of $6,800,000. However, by August 1997, the estate was sold for a reduced sum of $5,300,000, marking a considerable loss for the once high-flying rapper. Despite changing hands again in 2012 for $5,400,000, the property's resale value failed to match its initial exorbitant purchase and construction costs. M.C. Hammer's extravagant real estate venture serves as a cautionary tale about the pitfalls of unchecked spending and the consequences of overreaching financial ambition. While his dream mansion stood as a testament to his unparalleled success and lavish lifestyle, its eventual sale underscored the stark reality of financial instability and the importance of prudent financial management, even for the rich and famous. House in Tracy, California. M.C. Hammer lives in Tracy with his family and children located in California. Furthermore, the place is family-friendly and ideal for raising children. Furthermore, this is a great neighborhood with a quiet and peaceful environment. The house boasts four bedrooms and three bathrooms, providing ample space for the entire family to thrive. Its large ranch-style layout is complemented by a saltwater pool adding a touch of resort-like luxury to the property. The open-concept design floods the home with natural light, creating a warm and inviting atmosphere throughout. Meticulously maintained and thoughtfully updated, this home offers the best of modern living. A newly renovated kitchen, equipped with top-of-the-line Thermador appliances and granite countertops, serves as the heart of the home, seamlessly connecting to the family room with a cozy fireplace and a serene view of the pool. The outdoor living area is a haven for summer fun, boasting over 1,300 square feet of space complete with a gas grill, stove in the gazebo and multiple deck areas for lounging and entertaining. Additionally, a generator ensures uninterrupted power supply, providing peace of mind during inclement weather. Further enhancing its appeal, the property features a finished walkout basement complete with a wine cellar. An additional bedroom, a full bathroom, and a recreation room. This space opens up to a fenced yard, perfect for outdoor activities and creating cherished family memories. With newer French drains, widened driveways, updated HVAC systems, and modern appliances, this home offers convenience, comfort, and functionality at every turn. From its luxurious amenities to its family-friendly layout, M.C. Hammer's residence in Tracy embodies the epitome of modern living, making it a truly exceptional place to call home. Dear viewers, what do you think about the house above? Let us know below in the comments section. And now we invite you to follow along to see what cars are in his supercar collection. Cars. MC Hammer's garage offers a glimpse into his automotive preferences, showcasing two distinct yet stylish vehicles. Among them is a 2009 Dodge Challenger, a timeless classic known for its bold design and powerful performance. With a current market value of approximately $22,000. This iconic car combines retro charm with modern features, making it a favorite among enthusiasts and collectors alike. Alongside the Dodge Challenger sits a 2018 Ford Taurus, a sleek and sophisticated sedan renowned for its refined demeanor and comfortable ride. Priced at around $28,000, this contemporary vehicle exemplifies luxury and reliability, making it a popular choice for discerning drivers seeking both style and substance. Dear viewers, what do you think about the luxury cars he is using? Let us know below in the comments section. 
Now we will see how he contributed to charity throughout the years of his career. Philanthropy Throughout his career, MC Hammer has not only made waves in the music industry but also used his influence for philanthropic endeavors. One notable aspect of his charitable efforts is his involvement in various charity funds, where he has dedicated his time and resources to support causes close to his heart. Among the charity funds that MC Hammer has championed is the Be Do Have Fund. This initiative reflects his belief in the power of giving back to the community and helping those in need. Through this fund, Hammer has contributed to various projects and initiatives aimed at making a positive impact on people's lives. Additionally, Hammer has been a supporter of the TGR Foundation, which is committed to empowering youth through education and mentorship. By lending his voice and resources to this foundation, he has helped provide opportunities for young people to achieve their full potential and pursue their dreams. Furthermore, MC Hammer has been involved with the Black Eyed Peas organization, a nonprofit dedicated to using music and the arts to uplift underserved communities and promote social change. Through his collaboration with this organization, he has worked to address issues such as poverty, education, and social justice, using music as a platform for positive transformation. Personal Life MC Hammer's personal life is marked by a significant event, his marriage to Stephanie on December 21, 1985. Together, they have built a family that includes three sons, two daughters, and Hammer's grandson. Their union is a testament to enduring love and commitment, reflecting Hammer's values of family and unity. Through the years, Hammer and Stephanie have navigated life's joys and challenges together, fostering a strong bond that extends beyond their marriage. As parents, they have nurtured and guided their children, instilling in them the importance of love, respect, and responsibility. Thank you for watching the entire video. Your support means the world to us. If you liked this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You'll stay updated on all our latest uploads and help us grow our community. Thank you.